Well, in 1990, when the U.S. Congress passed the Climate Change Research Act, it not only wanted to coordinate research across agencies, but it wanted to ask what the significance of it was. And so it asked that a series of assessments be done about what the science of climate change would mean to the people of the U.S. The first of those efforts for the, um, to, to look at in potential impacts for the U.S. Uh, started in 1997, and the effort ran to the year 2000. We basically sponsored uh, workshops and, and efforts in 20 regions around the country. We did it for five initial set of sectors of the economy, that is for agriculture, for forests, for human health, for water resources, and for coastal regions. And then we had a national advisory committee that tried to draw all of that information together and put out what became the National Assessment Report, which is this document, which is a, the overview report. It's sort of a, an, the version of it for the public, and then it's supported by a document several times as thick that has a lot more detail about what happened. This report was drafted by the scientific members of this advisory committee who are largely scientists and other experts. Uh, it was put out for technical review and then for public comment and went through a sort of special uh, set of reviews and was published in uh, late 2000. Uh, just as it was about to come out in October of 2000, there was a lawsuit filed against it by a number of conservative groups, uh, also including uh, one member of the Senate and two members of the House of Representatives. Um, and they filed a lawsuit, and it was a lawsuit against uh, William Jefferson Clinton, a citizen of New York residing in Washington, D.C., and Neil Lane, director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy. Well, in October 2000, uh, William Jefferson Clinton was president of the United States, but they weren't even willing to call him president. So it gives you a sense of how, uh, how much of an attack it was against the report. And they basically alleged that there had been some violations in how the report had been produced with respect to the Federal Advisory Committee Act um, those were never proven. The lawsuit was actually dropped uh, about a year later. But at that point, a second lawsuit was filed uh, about it, which basically uh, was based on the Federal Data Quality Act, which is a relatively new act. It didn't receive any hearings in Congress before it was passed. But its nominal purpose is to uh, say that agencies are not allowed to have anything that is wrong up on the computer, um, you know, or disseminate anything up on the, on the web that way. Well, that seems like a very uh, sound law. You don't want agencies dis disseminating things that might be wrong. Uh, however, the way it was interpreted, or the, the lawsuit was proposing to interpret it on this report, was to say, well, in looking ahead at the climate for the next hundred years, um, you took two scenarios. That is, two plausible indications of what it could be. They differ from each other. Uh, since they differ, one is clearly wrong. Therefore, you have something wrong that is, not up, that is up on the computer, and you should not further disseminate this report. Um, so they were saying, basically, that if you propose, if you don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future, you're not allowed to think about and do these kinds of analyses in the future. Um, that's a, a very strange way to go. What the scientific community has done in trying to look to the future is to say, well, we can't tell what's going to happen. If I were starting back in 1900, looking ahead to the year 2000, I can't say exactly what will happen. But I ought to be able to consider some plausible cases. And so you take a range of cases. You might have uh, a case where things go very well in terms of energy emissions or they don't go well. That's what the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has done. What the U.S. did, and it was all we could sort of do at the time, was take two different climate scenarios. Let's assume the U.S. will follow a situation where it becomes a warmer but wetter, and let's look at one that turned out to be sort of hotter and drier and see what happens and try and figure out what that would mean to the U.S. And maybe we can figure out and recommend some strategies that would help people deal with that if you know what's going to happen in particular ways. Or maybe we'll find there's some reasons that it's going to go one way or the other. So this report was based on uh, a couple of different scenarios. Um, well, that lawsuit also ended up being dismissed or 
uh, I guess withdrawn, there's some legal terms, but uh, withdrawn. Um, but it, um, it was withdrawn in part because, not, not because of the strength of the, of the argument, I, th I think, although the Department of Justice was apparently prepared to defend it because anything you say about the future, it's hard it isn't data, it isn't factual information, it's basically your best estimate of what it could be. Uh, so it has ended up being dismissed, but nonetheless the administration has put uh, a notice up on the web saying that this report didn't go through the proper procedures of that act. Well, this report was passed and taken, was issued well before the act, and it also actually went through the types of things that the act would require. Um, but formally, it did not go through the provisions of this sort of act that, that came later. And the uh, administration is basically not distributing or not trying to, to uh, recognize the results of what the National Academy of Sciences in its review of these reports has said is very valuable information about what the impacts of climate change might be for the U.S.